Another big crowd here tonight at the stadium. Welcome to the Carlin Lynch Activity Center. We're ready to go here from the stadium. That will go. Coach Lassie getting her team fired up. What a game. Nothing fancy, just end the game. Not returned, and the point goes to the Indians. It deflected in! Oh, what a save. The Indians get the point. What a slid hit. Goal! Did she score? Yes, she does! They may not catch him. Puts the Indians on the board. Indians will win it. The crowd is going crazy. Wow! Garvin is going to the final four game. Good afternoon, soccer fans. Welcome to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Evan Massoud with you here on DCTV. Great to be back with you for another school year here in the great town of Dartmouth. The Brockton Boxers in town for the Dartmouth Boys Indians team, their first game of the season. Uh, they were supposed to play last week, but the extreme heat saw a lot of cancellations. Um, and down here, they did not play Bishop Stang last Tuesday as they were supposed to. So uh, the Indians coming in here with no games under their belt, official games. Uh, they did have preseason action, of course, uh, whereas the boxers coming in at 1-0-1, they've already had two live games this season. So, uh, you know, they'll have a little bit of an upper hand, I guess you could say, in that respect, because, you know, you know, game minutes, obviously are totally invaluable. Uh, you, it's hard to compare to preseason minutes. Uh, for Brockton, they had a win on the road at Barnstable, 3-2. to two. That was a week ago today. And then on Thursday, they played as well. They went up to BC High, uh, just in uh, South Boston area there. And uh, they tied. They came to a draw 2-2, two, two, the final score. For Brockton, this is game three of a four-game road trip to start their 2023 season. They'll finish it on Thursday this week at Durfee. And um, so I'll actually get to see them twice this week because down in Fall River, I have that game on Thursday. So uh, for me, kind of enjoying this, getting to see both of these teams early in the season. Um, you know, for Dartmouth, coach said good preseason as he's Coach Silva in his 10th year here with the Indians. Um, you know, and again, nothing like the real game, but he was happy with this preseason. He says he's happy with the blend of players. Um, had some good impact players that are underclassmen. They have a few sophomores on this varsity roster. Um, he says very happy with how coachable they are. They were hungry. They want to, you know, get better with each opportunity. So, um, you know, we'll see how it translates here today in live official game action against a formidable formidable opponent. The Boxers last year made the tournament, got down into the round of 16, a 14-2-2 two two regular season. Very impressive uh, for the Boxers a year ago. So we are underway here at the stadium. Dartmouth in their home green uniforms. Brockton in their white road uniforms with red and black numbers and lettering. And that'll go out of play. Your starters for the visiting boxers. We have number two, Valdemar Rodriguez. Number three, Benicio Andrade. Number four, Wolf Lentz Victor. Number eight, Fabio Fernandez. Number nine, Nevin Fonts. Number 10, Edgar D'Andrade. Number 14, Edelson Vieira Gonzalez. Number 15, Alexandro Moreira. Number 18, Anthony Pina Santos. Number 21, Jason Moreira. And number 33, Wilson Andrade. Boxers led by head coach Herminio Furtado, his seventh year coaching or as head coach of the program. For Dartmouth, their starters are as follows. Number one, Carter Bates. Number three, Landon Raposa. Number seven, Lucas Martinez. Number nine, Captain Tyler Medeiros. Number 10, Captain Nicholas Silvia. Number 11, Landon Cabral. Number 12, Ethan Medeiros. Number 15, Owen Carter, also a captain. Number 17, Andrew Souza. Number 18, Luke Bessett. And, uh, Bessett. and number 20, Lennox Masuko. 
And again, Josh Sylvia, uh, Silva, excuse me, the uh, head coach for Dartmouth, his 10th year leading this program. For Brockton in goal, it is number 33, Wilson Andre. The goalie for Dartmouth is number one, Carter Bates. Glad to get this one in today. Yesterday, some nasty weather as well. Tomorrow in the evening, we're supposed to see some thunderstorms. They're issuing flash flood alerts already for tomorrow night into Thursday. So like more of what we had yesterday come through. So nice to have a sunny day. Get the game in here. Indians passing up ahead. Played on side. Raposa trying to get there first. Collision there with Rodriguez, and Rodriguez able to turn it around, gets back to his feet, and sends it back toward the middle of the field. Good defense there, good chance at a break for Raposa, but even better defense as the boxers send it right back down the other side of the field very quickly in the box, trying to make something happen. Loose ball is transferred over now. Went from DeAndrade to Fonts, and now back toward midfield, the Indians. Looking to send it back the other way. Good pass, and here we go again. The same two, Raposa and Rodriguez. And this one will be corralled routinely by Andrade. The keeper came loose almost. An opportunity there. Raposa never quit on it. Almost made a play when the ball was set back into play. As he went tumbling down right across the goal line. I remember when this field was uh, grass, you know, before the renovations, it wasn't width-wise, sideline to sideline, you know, true size. And that was something opposing, uh, opposing players always kind of had a challenge with because they couldn't spread the ball out. Um, but here, you know, with the new fields, when they did it, it's, it's appropriate size. And they were able to fit it, though, within the footprint. I mean, there was so little room on the borders of this stadium. It really makes it feel like... The field is smaller than it is, uh, you know, because there's no track around it. So you, you look at schools like New Bedford or Durfee, and it just seems like the complex is so big because you have the field areas and you have the track surrounding everything. But here, I mean, we're right on top of the action. Cameras, broadcasters, fans um, always enjoy here. A little bit of a collision and a clear out by Masuko as he kind of gave a good body check there onto Andrade down in the box. Back towards midfield here on the far side. A lot of contact and a whistle is drawn. Sylvia kind of leaning there on the boxers, Morera. Both kind of lost their footing and uh, their balance. And Sylvia couldn't recover fast enough. So the free kick. So we're back towards the circle. Cutting back is Fernandes, sending it now to his defender. Misplayed by Andre, he'll kick it back to Andre, the keeper. We'll now get it to Victor on the sideline, and it's out of play. Rodriguez not able to get there fast enough. A throw in up the field for the Indians. Martinez will take care of it. Sent toward the box right into the hands of Andre. No Indians down there. Hey, hey, hey. 
cut off. Macedo back to Martinez. Sylvia, uh, excuse me, uh, Bissett trying to break free, almost lost his balance, cuts back in now, couldn't take it away from Fernandez. And a good pass up the field, lofted in the air by Medeiros. Now a header from Souza as they get it away from the box. Out of play, and the boxers will throw. Out of play. And it'll be a goal kick. Good, strong kick, gonna land about 60 yards from where it was kicked. Hooked back now by Rodriguez. DeAndre going far side. Finds Marrera, cut off by Cabral. Indians turn it back around, and that'll draw a kick. And a whistle. Conference game today, so three officials on the field instead of the usual two. Not a very good kick from Andrade in goal. And it does the job, boxers regain possession here. Race to the sideline and Rodriguez is there, send it right down the field. Madeira sent it back to him. And Raposa went down a little awkwardly now, walking gingerly on that left foot. That is going to clear the grounds through the upright. It's a great opportunity for the boxers. Just couldn't keep it low enough. Centering pass and off the toes. And the neighbors have a souvenir. Well, a lot of contact for both sides right there in the, along the sidelines, not drawing a whistle. And now to the turf went Morera as well, right in front of uh, the boundaries and midfield. You know, for me, as long as it doesn't get out of hand, I don't mind that. A little bit of physicality, but... The interesting thing is that a lot of times, a lot of times we see a little bit of liberties at the start of the game and then the officials kind of tighten it up as the game goes on. So it makes it a little difficult for the players, for the broadcasters, to kind of get a feel for what's gonna be called and what's not. We've seen whistles for less than that contact that we just saw. So be interesting to see if this is uh, how it'll continue throughout the game. As long as no one's getting hurt, you know, I, I don't see a problem with a little bit of physicality. It's not basketball. It is a contact sport to an extent.
Near sideline, Rodriguez connecting there with DeAndre, who gives way to Morera down the sideline, riding the line, and it'll go out. Chasing it down was Fonts, couldn't get there in time. Now some subs for the Indians. Medeiros and Bissett coming back in as Nathan Pilling comes out, as well as uh, Lucas Martinez. Pilling was not a starter. Martinez is a starter today. And waiting on the throw here, Medeiros. Good, strong throw. And there is a whistle. Free kick for the Indians. Crossing the field, sideline to sideline on a hooking kick. A lot of spin, a lot of pull to it. Another free kick coming here. This one is going to go against Dartmouth as Raposo made the original contact. Brockton electing for short passes here. Short kick, passing to feet well. Decent ball control here. Really spreading the field, getting almost everybody involved here on this progression into Dartmouth's side. The Indians trying to break it up. Can't get control yet. Now they do. And a chance, no, couldn't clear. Sent it right to Victor. They were targeting Medeiros, but he was not free, not freed up, I should say. Gonna have our first corner kick of the game, near side left. Right near the truck, Brockton will send it from the corner. Just off screen here, on its way. Lofting toward the box, that's a good kick. Header is gonna go right into the hands. Great job there by Bates, up the ladder, snaring it before it hits the crossbar. That's a textbook corner kick right there. You want to get it just kind of past the goal a bit so you can try to get somebody to come in on the ball. You get a little more force on it. If you're, if you're in front of the goal, obviously harder to redirect it. So that was well executed by Brockton almost pulling ahead here in this first. 15 minutes gone in the first half of varsity soccer action. Pretty evenly split. We've seen... Both sides with some decent chances. A lot of play at midfield. Not able to really get any breaks here. Um, not a lot of separation for either side. So tightly contested as Medeiros will kick it away. Towards the goal, fading towards the right, wide it goes as Andre grabs it. Crossing pass to Morera in stride. Couldn't continue his progression forward. Now a header back out of the box. Boxers trying to set something up again. DeAndre will get it back now from Morera. And back towards the circle. Up, 
Down deep in the corner, across the box, loose ball still and a collision. No whistles. Brockton wanted one. They wanted a PK and not gonna get it. Good pass here from Santos, but it's cut off by Brock uh, by Dartmouth. Going to the other side, Madeiras along the sideline, guarding it, and watches it go, he'll throw. Rather going to give way here. Landon Cabral sets it back in play. Down the field, a foot race to the ball, but not fast enough. Andrade able to scoop it routinely. Pilling and Martinez waiting to check back in for the Indians. The next stop in the action. Another good pass toward the box, set up beautifully, loose ball in front, Bates! Able to make the play. Fantastic save. Great set from the boxers. Rodriguez getting it down there. And fantastic reaction from Bates to bat it away and then corral it. Dartmouth sending it down the other direction here. Andrade will kick it away from the goal, from the box. You know, that's the kind of play, you're one-on-one -on -one with, with a forward as the goalie, and you make that kind of a play. If Those are the plays that come back, you look at them, and you say, if this game stays scoreless, or if you're able to win the game, you look at plays like that, and you say, that was a, dif that was a difference maker in the game. You know, we'll see who draws, draws first blood here as we're going to go into a timeout, actually, at the halfway mark. Uh, it looks like a mandated uh, water break here. It is, as we're halfway through the first half. The official stopping play. So both sides will get a moment to rehydrate and talk to the coaches. This is not an extended break by any stretch here. Uh, I like what I'm seeing from both sides so far. Seeing a lot of competitive play. Both teams trying to make some plays offensively and defensively. So pretty evenly matched through 20 minutes. We'll take a quick break ourselves here as we're in the water break between Dartmouth and Brockton. 20 minutes, 26 seconds left in the first half. We'll be right back. Whistles sounded as we were coming back out of the promo, so game on here at the stadium. Welcome back. Evan Massoud with you as we're about to continue with the second half of the first half of boys varsity soccer. Brockton Boxers in town for their third game. Dartmouth Indians hosting. It's their first game of the season, official game, that is. And a scoreless 
match to this point. Should be Brockton Ball to start it off. They'll throw from the far side. Walking out over there is Alexandro Morera. Coming up on 4.30 here, 78 degrees still. Beautiful mid-September day for soccer. Cleared out as it lands just shy of midfield. Good pass there over the head of the defense. It's a one on two though. The defenders outnumbering Barrera, number five, getting his first minutes of the game. Martinez back in as well, number seven for Dartmouth, as is Pilling, number two. Out of bounds, it'll be Dartmouth ball. Good pressure there by Martinez and Sylvia. Not giving any space, forcing that ball out of bounds. Very quickly, Brockton sending it back down. Bates is there, he will scoop it. There were no boxers in sight, just a hard hit ball down the field. Forcing the punt a little shorter than his last one. Out of play, and it'll be a throw for Rodriguez. Coach Furtado from Brockton. You know, talking about last year, um, you know, a highly successful team, a team that had a lot of players that played with each other on varsity for three years of their four high school years. Um, so, you know, they had... A lot of experience, had that connection. Um, you know, that makes a lot of times for a successful year. Uh, you know, when you kind of know what your teammates are thinking in advance of you making a decision, you can kind of read each other's minds. Having that, we tend to see in high school, that kind of connection between players lends itself to very successful teams. And that's why 14 wins a year ago with two ties. Uh, but this year, um, only three of the starters from last year back uh, that had that playoff experience, um, six total on the team are back, but three of the starters, three of the 11 starters, um, only three are back. So in a sense, they're still, um, you know, in a way, it's kind of a rebuild year for, for Brockton. Um, you know, when the majority of your team has not seen a tournament play, um, you know, has not started a tournament game, that that certainly can make it a little challenging to start the year, you know, getting basically a different group of starters in there. Um, but Coach told me, you know, he's impressed by the commitment from the players. Uh, Preseason went very well. Uh, he says he actually feels that for the players themselves, he says he feels like there's a little less pressure on them Um here in 2023 than, than last year's team. Um, and I think, again, it kind of goes to the expectations that, you know, last year's team had, you know, so many players that had played together for a long time in high school that, you know, you think, okay, their senior year is going to be big. You know, I know I've had those ex expectations over a few teams in the past as well. So, um, you know, this year, knowing that there's, you know, a little bit of rebuilding to be done here in a way and, kind of a restart that uh, kind of lifts the weight a little bit. And that can, you know, make it to be a little more fun and a little less like work, if you will, right? So coach is pleased. Uh, he thinks that he's got a team that's going to compete very well here in the South Coast. Brockton always very tough uh, in boys soccer. Loose ball. Brockton gets there first. Now down the field, onside a break. 
Ethan Medeiros past the goalie, might have been deflected. It was hooking a bit. I'm not sure if Andrade ever touched it, but it seemed like it redirected a bit. Let's take a look at the replay. Absolutely it did. That should be a corner for, it should be a corner for Dartmouth. And it is. Sylvia going to the far side. Andrade gets the bad news. He thought he didn't touch it, but Dartmouth set up for a corner kick. That ball would have gone in the corner pocket had Andre not gotten a finger on it. So Dartmouth's first from the corner. Batted away by Andre. Great play with the outstretched arm. And now Brockton surging down the field. Souza and uh, DeAndre got kind of tangled up a bit. DeAndre, uh, Souza kind of had his arm around like the shoulder of uh, DeAndre. Lucky he didn't get called for a foul on that and on the play as they were trying to slow up the slow up the ball. Again, right along the line, out of play, and it'll be Dartmouth ball. Tripped, out of bounds, losing his footing. Rodriguez, a quick throw in, it goes in front of him. Not a very good throw there. That was not. That was kind of a rushed throw. And it goes right out of bounds, so Brockton getting the ball right back. And substitution here now for Dartmouth as uh, they're gonna give Sylvia a break. Coming in uh, is starter Raposa. Gonzalez coming out as well for Brockton. John Texera going in. Manuel Lopes uh, coming out for the moment. And checking back in is Nevin Fonts. Passed back to Victor. Now going back the same direction. Nice. Oh, are they going to say hands? I think so. Yep, going to be a free kick for the boxers. Good kick down in the box, but it's going to go out of play. Good, strong kick, landing right at the emblem. Send it back to Andrade. Out of play, throw in for Brockton. Good crowd here today for uh, the Indians. Again, their first official game of the season. Not surprised. Always a good crowd, but especially today being game one. Not a lot of uh, the whole visitor side basically empty um, to the left of us here on these bleachers behind Brockton's bench. The JV teams, it looks like, have just come to the stadium because Brockton just had a bunch of players go to the far side, on the other side of the field, but, um, and I saw some Dartmouth players come in as well on the near side, but really just Dartmouth fans here today. Oh. 
Oh. That was awkward all around. Um, Morera down for a moment here, but his high kick almost took out uh, Raposa. And then he went down. And the free kick for Brockton resets us. A little shove there from DeAndre pushing Masuko out of the way. Crossing the field, it goes out, and it'll be Dartmouth ball, but not before. We have a substitution here. As Nick Sylvia coming back in. And Lucas Macedo will take a seat. Again, kicking it back to Andrade, making the goalie do the work here. Brockton not afraid to send it back if the defenders are kind of jumbled up, trying to spread the field a bit, get some space. That's a good pass and even better header there by Medeiros. It's coming toward the sideline. Sylvia fighting with Rodriguez through the legs of Sylvia, tumbling out of bounds, goes... Uh, Morera. Bissett went down to the turf. Now to the far side of the box. It'll go right through everybody and out of bounds. We're under 10 minutes here in this first half. Scoreless game so far. Oh, almost a little juggle there. Not a clean take of the ball. Indians still with a chance, but they would have had some serious numbers. Kind of took a funny bounce there off of Sylvia. He had open field and some help. Taken away down in the corner. But recovering, DeAndre gets it right back. Victor takes a shot, header, gonna go wide to the right. Another good set by Brockton, just nothing to show for it. Good attempt. Oh, hello, Masuko got knocked down, but is okay. And it should be a throw. It did not go out on the goal line. So it should be a throw very deep down the sideline. And it will be, yes, Rodriguez getting ready. Out of play. Another good job there by the Brockton defense. Andrade clearing it out. 
was double teamed and was still able to turn it around. Now back to Dartmouth's side of the field again. Rodriguez trying to get it down to his forwards. Top of the box. Martinez clearing it along with Pillings. Now Brockton's got a lot of speed, let me tell you. They can cover ground quickly. That was cleared out by Marrera, and he was a few strides back and was able to stick the foot out and stop it, force the throw. Come in this near side now. Looking for a call, not getting one. Good pass up the field. It's going to get cut off. Still on side. Foot race to the ball, and it's cleared out. Sky towards the far side. Still in play, though. And back to midfield. Clock stopped here for the final five. Into the hands of Bates. Wilson Andrade, goalie, taking it again. Rodriguez waiting to throw. Shadows creeping onto the field now. As the sun starts going down, the stadium lights and trees behind us, the press box starting to make their way from the sideline. Be a throw now for Raposa. Good strong throw up the sideline, close to hands, goes out of play, and Brockton will have it. Line drive up the field. Andrade coming out for it, waits at the top of the box. Back to Andre again. He passes it to Victor. Taken away. Redirecting it. Nobody up there, though. Andre has to come out. Makes a tough play. Man, kind of got away from him a little bit.
You can hear Coach Sylvia, Coach Silva saying, uh, push up, push up, trying to get the Indians to be a little more aggressive, pushing up the field here as we're getting near the end of the half. Janielson DeBrito coming in, taking, taking the spot of uh, Jason Marrera for a couple moments here. Sticking with it and interrupted, broken up, Andrade. Is it to Fernandez and now down the far side? And that's the first half. Highly competitive, seemed to both sides getting a little stronger as the half went on. But we hit the 10 minute break with a scoreless game from Memorial Stadium. We'll be back short time for the second half. Stay with us here on DCTV. Welcome back, everybody, to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Second half about to begin here on DCTV. Evan Mastud with you here for the afternoon. After 40 minutes, uh, we're at a stalemate here. Nothing, nothing, the score. Brockton at 1-0-1, oh already with a win on the season. But Dartmouth playing game one here on this Tuesday, September 12th. And uh, we'll see who can break the ice first. Both sides had some really great chances, uh, particularly later in the, in the latter part of the first half. And, uh, but neither side could cash in. The goalies have been solid to this point. The defenses have been solid to this point. So we got a real good one brewing here and I uh, hope you'll stick around for the second half. As we're just about ready to get it started. Brockton gets to put it into play first as Dartmouth had possession to start the first half, so Brockton getting it here to start the second. Good pass down in the box, a chance, and it's gonna go! Dartmouth breaks the ice in the first minute of the second half. Indians up, one nothing. You know, it was Nicholas Silvio I talked to before the game. He got it started. 
fought with it, got it to Macedo, a sophomore on this varsity team, and he puts his team ahead the first goal of the 2023 season. Sylvia down in the corner, able to get it out of there. Finds Cabral, who then loses it as Marrera takes it up here. The sideline for the moment. Good pass up ahead for Brockton now. John Texera gets pushed. Goes out of play, no foul, just a throw in coming for the boxers. Down in the box, shot taken right into the hands of Bates. DeAndrade trying to answer from point blank range. And Bates able to stop it. Came out just a little bit to kind of close off that corner post, make it a really small window for DeAndrade. Shot taken again right into the hands of Bates. This one from a distance. That was taken really from like the 30 yard line. That one traveled in the air for quite a ways. It'll be punted away. Coming to the sideline here on a hop. A lot of pressure from Brockton here. Indians trying to clear it. That's a good kick down towards midfield. It lands just shy of the 50. Down the field, speed ahead. That's a foul, you can't drag him down. Let's take a look at this as we make up the rules as we go. Yeah, just grab the jersey and throw him to the turf, sure. You know, in football, that's a flag too. It's called a horse collar. And, and what's worse, it's right in front of the game official. Okay, I talked about it in the first half. There's a difference between not calling it for aggressiveness and blatant fouls. That was a foul. Should have been a free kick right at the 40, at the 30 for Dartmouth. Horrible non-call. Martinez gets stopped. He was working the sideline there. Another chance, Andrade, what a nice play this time. Ranging play to a hook slide and grabbing it for throwing it out to the near side. That was a great play. Had pressure coming.
In the box, boxers are threatening. Indians can't seem to get the ball away. Brockton with four in the box, five in the box, and almost. As Tixera trying to get it out of the air. Just a little too far away from him there. A little late in getting the leg up. Five o'clock here in Dartmouth. As this event one hour old. Good kick down the field it'll go. Well out of the box is Andrade. Martinez. Great pass down the field. And another push down. Out of play, breaks it up, but still be Brockton ball. At least it stops the forward progression. The field chasing it down. Out of bounds. Landon Raposa. A full sprint down the side. It'll be a throw for Brockton. Sideline clear, and it's Dartmouth ball as well. Deflected off of the boxers forward. Raposa gonna get a little bit of a rest on the bench. The sophomore starter for Coach Silva. Coach was singing his praises to me pre-game. Said he's been a spark and a nice surprise here to start the season. He's had some really productive minutes, gonna take a breather. As will Owen Carter. So he takes a seat as well for the time being.
It's going to be a corner kick for Brockton. And Dartmouth let it go. I think they thought that Brockton touched it last, and the corner kick, it's coming. Batted away. Bates got his hands on it. Nice job. It's going to go toward the sideline. It goes out of play. It'll be Dartmouth ball. Texera tried to sell it, but not successful in doing so, clearly crossing the yellow line. Dartmouth with the throw, it was Cabral. And the Indians will throw again. Letting it go out was Medeiros. We'll give it back to Cabral again. Third straight throw in for Dartmouth. Everybody really bunched up here along the side. Now breaking out as it goes backwards. And Rodriguez not able to handle it. Waiting on the throw out in the sun, the far side. Turnaround there by Rodriguez and the Brockton defense will settle and fire away. Colin for was Texera here at midfield. Cut off by a couple of Indian players. And Cabral looking for some space and it goes out of bounds. Cabral throwing in again. He's been very busy here on this sideline the last couple minutes. Had wrapped around, Raposa wrapped around, literally being hugged, not able to get free, but now is free. 
Trying to pass through the middle. Martinez feeding it to him. Loose ball in front. It's going to go. It dribbles through. Or are they whistling it dead? Are they calling it off sides or no? It looks like they're taking it off the board. That's not going to count. Still one nothing. And we saw that initial break by Raposa, and then he kind of stopped. Looked like he came back in time, but clearly the call not going his way. Taken away, Texera, centering pass in the box, headed out, still in the air. And a collision there, that will draw a whistle as uh, Sylvia kind of got sandwiched between two Brockton players, mid-air. So a free kick, not waiting around. Right down the field to Martinez, off his foot. Andrade will get there in time. That's going to stay in bounds and now bounce out. It'll be Brockton Ball. Diego De Vega and Edilson Vieira Gonzalez into the game for Brockton for uh, Viega, his first minutes of the game. Sylvia coming out for the moment for, Bro uh, for Dartmouth, excuse me. What an effort there. Raposa basically took it away. Now gets sent to the turf. And Gonzalez trying to make up for it. Gets back to the ball here. Lofted. That's going to come right into the bleachers. Uh, past the bleachers, in fact. <laughs> That's a push. That should be a foul as well. Not called against Dartmouth. Break down the other end of the field. A foot race to the ball. Raposa, it's broken up. Madeiras takes a shot. Loose ball, and it's grabbed in the air by Andrade. Let's see if uh, Victor touched it with his hand. Almost, uh, sorry, not Victor, Raposa for Dartmouth, but no. It, it looked like it, it was close, but no. And at 20 minutes and four seconds here, left to play in the half, mandatory break. 
the officials have called timeout on the field. And the teams will have some water, rehydrate, and meet with their coaches for a couple moments. Fun first 20 minutes here of this second half, that's for sure. Seen a lot of uh, aggressive play, more aggressive than in the first half, for sure. And it kind of, you know, changed um, after Dartmouth scored, the goal coming at 51 seconds, courtesy of Lucas Macedo, the sophomore, with the help of the assist going to Nicholas Silvia. And scoring that quickly and that early in the second half here, coming right out of the gate, really changed the pace for sure. They have one of the Indians players stretching it out as well on the field with the trainer. Might be cramping up a little bit. I mean, it is hot out in the sun. It's definitely dried out a bit compared to yesterday. It was so humid yesterday, but if you're standing in the sun, it's still quite hot. Here we go. This player's back out on the field. It looks like uh, Luke Bissett still down on the field there. Yeah, number 18. That right leg, kind of very stiff, not putting much weight on it either. He's going to come off. Gonna be a free kick for Brockton to start off play as we get back into it here. 20 minutes and four seconds left in regulation. Or in the game, I should say, because there's no overtime in the regular season. Dartmouth with the one nothing lead, hoping to hold. I'm sure they would really like to have some uh, insurance as well, maybe grab another. Been a very close game. Again, both sides have really had some great opportunities. Dartmouth able to break through early in the second half, but that's it. A couple good saves in the first half for Bates. Bates a junior for the Indians, so you know, stands to think that uh, if he has a good season this year, he'll be starting next year as well. So he'll be the go-to guy. He looks very comfortable in net, that's for sure. Like I said, had a really good play in the first half that you know I talked about earlier. Uh, had a couple good plays here in the second half. Um, I'd say about at the the ten minute mark. Was the starter last year as the goalie, as a sophomore also. So, you know, his second year starting for Dartmouth. And, uh, yeah, players cramping up for sure. We just saw uh, you know, multiple players on the ground now. Jeez.
So the clock has stopped and time out here on the field as uh, two Indians. Sylvia is up and will try to walk it off, but Macedo still on the ground. Cramping up right under the, right under the calf, right under the, the knee. All right, well, we're in an injury timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll be back with you in just a couple seconds. Stay with us. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field. We're back here. Uh, Macedo will take an exit. He's still wincing here. Really couldn't put much weight on his left leg. So he's still stretching it out. Got the water bottle in hand as we're waiting for a free kick here for the Indians. Uh, and while we get back onto the field here and get ready, uh, more sports coming your way on DCTV this week. We have girls volleyball on Friday at 5.15. Live from the Carlin Lynch Activity Center, North Quincy coming down. Square off against the Lady Indians. And uh, so that should be a good one. The Quincy team's usually very good in volleyball, boys and girls. So that should be a good matchup. Good non-conference, non-league uh, test early in the season for Coach Lassie's squad. So uh, 5.15 live here on DCTV. For both of these teams, uh, the road ahead, Dartmouth will be on the road for their next two. On Thursday, they're heading to nearby New Bedford as the conference play continues, a 6 o'clock start in New Bedford, and the same can be said for next Tuesday um, at Durfee, as you'll see the Hilltoppers for the first time, and beyond Durfee's brand new field at Mac Aldridge Field. Six o'clock start in Fall River. While the girls are home here at four o'clock, we'll have that one for you next Tuesday as well. I'll be here for it. So um, Durfee coming up here for girls soccer and see Lady Indians. For Brockton, they will see Durfee before Dartmouth does. That's in two days on the road. That is loose in front. Whistle sounds and play is dead. Next Tuesday, Brockton returns home. It'll be their first home game of the season. They'll have BR as that'll finish uh, for both teams here, a slate of three straight conference games uh, here over a week's time. That's a six o'clock game versus BR. An interesting one that caught my eye as well, following uh, BR next Tuesday, which is the 19th, Brockton won't play again until Saturday, September 23rd. And interestingly enough, Lemonster is their opponent and they're supposed to travel to Lemonster. Why do I bring that up? Well, yesterday with all the rain that we had and the flash flooding, Lemonster got slammed in about a five to six hour period of time with over nine inches of rain, like historic flooding um, out in Lemonster. And uh, I mean, I know the area very well because I went to Fitchburg State and you can't get to Fitchburg State without going through Lemonster and Route 2. Um, in fact, the exit that I used to take off of Route 2 to get onto Main Street, Route 12, um, the water, it's like a bowl. Um, because 
Route 12 goes over Route 2. So Route 2 actually dives down under uh, for the interchange, under an overpass, and then goes back up. It's very hilly here in the Worcester Hills. So for about a quarter mile on the west side, the water runs down, and about a tenth of a mile on the east side, the water runs down. It all collects in one spot. And the water was deep enough to basically cover a semi. I mean, that's how much water was. And they also had a dam that broke, that gave way, uh, and collapsed. So that led to more flooding. So they're dealing with some very serious issues up there uh, today. Uh, and they are in a state of emergency. In fact, there's a do not travel order issued because of all of the damage and the water. And of course, more rain tomorrow and possibly more rain depending on this Hurricane Lee and where it tracks. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'm not sure if the high school you know, had any damage um, in what might transpire 10 days from now, but um, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm not sure if, we don't know if that game will actually get played for Brockton, but um, caught my eye when we were looking at the schedules that, not sure, not sure. But, uh, you know, we wish the people up in that area in Lemonster, you know, well wishes, because uh, pretty serious what, what was going on uh, yesterday there, and uh, now again today, dealing with the after effects of it, so. More cramping up for the Indians players. It's Sylvia. And he's hobbling around. So we've had a lot of stoppages here. It's game running long now. We've had about 10 minutes of pausing. Restart here, 16 minutes and counting. Martinez passing it up ahead. Boxers with plenty of numbers, so send it back to Andre. They've done this a lot, uh, relying on Andre really as an 11th man on the field, another defender, not just as the goalie. They've kept him involved, not afraid to pass it back to him to, you know, kind of give it a good boot and reset the field. You know, in doing so, by doing that, you can have, you know, your defenders kind of drop back a little bit, a little sooner, and it really gives you a 10 on 10 on the field with the ball coming into play versus one of your defenders kicking it to nine guys that are outmatched by the other 10 from the previous, from the other team. So, it kind of creates a more even matchup if you can keep your goalie involved like that so that you have one-on-ones with your uh, your defenders, your midfielders, and your you know offense, your forwards. And a whistle coming. Raposa going to get tagged on that foul. Loose in front, cleared out. Martinez, defenders on their way, sends it down the field. Look at Raposa go. Ball still loose, trying to get there before it goes out of bounds, and he cannot do so. Well, this ain't a play on, man. That crossed the line. Wow. What an effort by Raposa. Didn't give up on the play. And played till the whistle, which never sounded, so you continue on. 
Oh. That is still in play, and Bates is out of the goal. Great job. It got a little dicey there for a moment. Boxers right back up the field, though, into the box. Centering pass blocked, cleared out. Rodriguez heading it, doesn't go far. Martinez settles it, kicks it down the sideline, and draws a whistle. Brockton not happy at all. Let's take a look at that last opportunity for the boxers down deep. You saw Bates came out, and it deflected right off of Victor. Had some backspin, some contact there. I mean, that could be... Could be a foul. When it's the goalie, though, a little more lenient are the officials. Andrade with a juicy rebound there. Didn't handle it cleanly at first. And the free kick from Dartmouth. Lofted to the box. Again, a loose ball. Still loose. A lot of spin, and it's going to stay in bounds. Kind of just popped up and spun there. Didn't get much distance on it. And good job by Andre to regroup. Gonzalez looking to throw in. And he kicks it out of bounds. Trying to get around the defenders, two of which had uh, Morera wrapped up. So he figured, try to get around them and was not able to do so. Owen Carter and Lucas Martinez to the bench for Dartmouth. A couple more substitutions made by Coach Silva. That's going to draw a whistle. And if he got tangled up, I think that's a good call. But it's going to give a free kick for Brockton right at the top of the box. Indians can create that human wall 10 feet from where the ball will be kicked. You also got to be careful, though. You don't want to shield your goalie. Got to be able to allow Bates to see. Here we go. Kick on its way. It's good. Bates never moved. And the game is tied 1-1. Went literally right around the wall of defenders. Nobody moved. Right through, right over, and Bates frozen. That's a tough one. A 1-1 one, one the score. 10.35 remains. Broken up, it'll go out of play. Brockton will get to throw. Brockton takes the lead. What a turn of events in less than a minute.
Ball came loose, set it up, and it went right through the legs of Bates. DeAndre with the goal, and Dartmouth into the timeout with 9.52 to play. Fans getting more vocal now with their team trailing by a goal. We'll see if Dartmouth ups the pressure a little bit. That's going out of play right into the hands of Coach. Down far corner, giving Chase kept in. Raposo will not get there, Victor, too much speed. Turns it around. And you gotta wonder, you had multiple Indians deal with cramping and go down. If that hadn't slow, hasn't slowed them up a little bit either. Yeah, one of the boxers there, Andre, now on the ground. Looks like he's going to work on the laces. Free kick coming. Good strong kick. Nice job by uh, Morera to get in front of that one. Now out of bounds it goes. They'll have the throw. Cabral touched it last. Centering pass, Bates will go out and make the play. Gutsy play right there. Crossing pass is gonna be a little too strong. Raposo cuts it off. Did not keep it in, yes he did. Loose ball in the box and it's cleared. Oh, 
Oh, not a good kick by Andrade at all. Lucky there were no Dartmouth players on that side. Out of bounds. Still Brockton ball. Yeah, a couple substitutions here. Pilling and Madeiras back in for Dartmouth. Fonts back in for Brockton. Sylvia coming out along with uh, Macedo. Both coming out for Dartmouth. Manuel Lopes, a non-starter today for Brockton, making his way to the bench. Final five minutes, great pass to Martinez, a chance, and it's cleared out, whistle sounds as well. It looks like it would have been offsides. the head there of Victor. Marrera trying to get around. Pilling can't do so. Crossing pass on target. Morera gets shoved in the box. Well, Coach Furtado wanted timeout. Wow, so the foul called against Brockton. Looked like the other way around, but they're saying that Marrera was holding the shirt of the Dartmouth player. Wouldn't be the first time we saw that happen today by a Brockton player. So it's a free kick for the Indians. So we finally get that all sorted out. And we restart. Low kick, right off the official. <laughs> and they'll re-kick, same spot. Probably be to the benefit of Madeiras. Didn't get much air on it. That's a much better kick. And a good job there by Lopes to 
Deflected out, rather, excuse me, Rodriguez, not Lopes, my bad. Rodriguez got the head on it, sent it down the sideline, or towards the sideline, and now the throw in for Brockton. Oh, that's a bad collision. It's a old player's quick to get up. Maybe it looked worse than it was. And it's Brockton ball, not Dartmouth. Great throw from Victor. Looking for DeAndre, he found him. Fernandes on the far side. Dartmouth running out of time here. Brockton, so quick to the ball here, has given Dartmouth no space since taking the lead. Another free kick coming here. That one coming back here into Brockton's territory. Andrade sending it back. Chance here. No good. Offsides called. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Good strong free kick down the field. Martinez couldn't get the foot on it. And now behind the ball. Out of play. It'll be a throw. Down the field, crossing pass. Got an Indian player down on the back of the field, behind the play. That's uh, Bissett. Nobody looking his way. Now jogging it off. And that's the game. Utterly frustrating and disappointing opening game for the Indians. We played a tough one, but 60 seconds, the demise, a foul that looked like a good foul call, resulting in almost what would be a penalty kick in terms of distance. And then Brockton able to score again less than 60 seconds later to take the lead, all happening with about 10 minutes to play in the game. 
So a tough loss for Dartmouth as they open the season here in conference play. It's not just a regular season loss, it's a conference loss as well for Brockton. They now have two wins on the season, 2-0-1 oh, and one, as conference play continues for both teams two days from now. Brockton at Durfee, Dartmouth at New Bedford. 2-1 final here from Memorial Stadium. For our great crew behind the scenes, our director today, Chad Amaral, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long. Tune in Friday night for girls volleyball from the Carlin Lynch Activity Center.